Another special type of factor in that we're going to do is a perfect square trinomial. So we just looked at difference of squares, which had perfect squares, but it was two terms. Now we're going to look at what happens when there are three terms. So let's start off by simplifying 2x minus 7 squared. What we should notice is we have the same bracket and it's raised to the power of 2. So let's go ahead and simplify that. So I can rewrite this as 2x minus 7 times 2x minus 7. And then I'm going to FOIL. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And then 2x times negative 7 is a negative 14x. And then we have negative 7 times 2x, which is also negative 14x. And negative 7 times negative 7, positive 49. Now I'm going to collect my like terms, and my final answer is going to be 4x squared minus 28x plus 49. Okay. What we should notice is that these two terms repeat. So it's double. 28 is double 14. And that 14 came from multiplying the 2x with the negative 7. Now, if I had 4x squared minus 28x plus 49, I could factor that using decomposition because it's a complex trinomial. But those numbers are big, okay? And there is a shortcut. And we're going to learn that shortcut, okay? So what we just did was an example of a perfect square trinomial, and all four of these um, trinomials are also perfect squares. Let's make some observations. What is common about all the first terms? x squared, x squared, 4x squared, 9x squared, 4x squared. You should notice they're all perfect squares. What do we notice about the last terms? 16, 25, 9, 1, and we had 49 above. Again, they're all perfect squares. So my outside terms are perfect squares. That's a nice way to identify them. Now the middle terms, they're not perfect squares. 8x, 10x, 12x, negative 6, and that 28. But is there a connection between them? So that 28 was double 14. And 14 I got from multiplying the 2x and the 7. Let me try another example and play around with it. So I'm going to take this 4x squared plus 12x plus 9, okay? So if I were to take the square root of 4x squared, I get 2x. If I were to take the square root of 9, I get 3. If I multiply these and then double, do I get 12x? So 2 times the 2x times the 3. I do. And that's the middle term. Let me try it for another one. Let me try it for 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. I'm going to ignore the negative. I'm going to take the square root of 9x squared and I get 3x. I take the square root of 1, I get 1. Let me double those numbers. So 2 times the 3x times 1. That's 6x. That's the middle. So that middle term is double the square roots of the outside. So double the square roots. So let's use that knowledge to figure out if 9x squared plus 12x plus 16 is a perfect square trinomial. So the way I'm going to check that is check that middle term. Is 12x double the square roots of my outside terms? So I'm going to take this 9x squared. I'm going to square root it. I get 3x. I'm going to take the 16, I'm going to square root it, and I get 4. Now I'm going to check. If I multiply 3x and 4, and then double it, so multiply by 2, will I get 12x? So double 3x times 4. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24. Not the same. Therefore, not a perfect squared. 24x is not the middle term. Therefore, not a perfect square trinomial. And that's the acronym I'm going to use, PST. Okay, so 
I'm going to write out the steps on how to factor a perfect square trinomial. So if we look at the question we did at the very beginning to simplify, so I have my expanded form here, 4x squared minus 28x plus 49, and I have my factored form, 2x minus 7 squared there. What I should notice, the square root of 4x squared is the 2x from the very front, right here. The square root of 49 is 7. How did I know to do subtraction? My middle term was subtraction. And then we have to raise the bracket to the power of 2, or else it's not going to be a trinomial or quadratic anymore. So let's write those steps out. So, number 1, square root outside terms. And these will give us our magic numbers, let's say. Put these terms in a bracket that's raised to the power of 2. So it's going to be like a bracket to the power of 2, and your two terms are going to go in there. Now, to decide if it's addition or subtraction, look at the middle term. Look at middle term for addition or subtraction. So let's put that into play on the next page. So let's factor this perfect square trinomial using that shortcut. So I'm going to take the square root of the first outside term, which is 2x. I'm going to take the square root of 81. That gives me 9. I'm going to put these numbers into a bracket that's raised to the power of 2. My middle term is negative, so I'm going to put negative. 2x minus 9 squared. If I wanted to make sure it was a perfect square trinomial, 2x times 9 is 18x. 18x times 2 is that middle 36x, so that's perfect. So let's just generalize it real quick. So if you have something of this form, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, that's a perfect square trinomial. The outsides, a squared and b squared, are obviously perfect square trinomials, and the middle term shows that it's double the square roots. So the factored form would be a plus b squared. Now, if the middle was subtraction, then it would be a minus b squared. Okay, let's try four examples. I'm going to do a and c with you guys, and then you're going to pause to do b and d. Okay, so I notice my outsides are perfect squares, the 49 and the 9. So I'm going to square root them. And when you're doing this, you should be doing a check for yourself. Okay. So I got the square root of 49x squared was 7x, the square root of 9 is 3. Let me see what happens when I double them. So 2 times the 7x and the 3x. Well, 2 times 7x is 14x times 3 is 42x. So that's perfect. Now I can go to my brackets. I put the 7x, I put the 3. It's addition because of that middle term. And don't forget to square the bracket or else it's not quadratic anymore. Okay, let's try the next one. 4x squared is a perfect squared. 81 is a perfect squared. I do my little check. So I double 2x times 9. So 2x times 9 is 18x. And if I double that, it's 36x. So that's good. I go to my brackets and I put those two square roots in. The brackets raise to the power of 2. And I'm going to put subtraction because the middle term is minus. And that's it. Make sure when you find any type of question, you check for common factors first. In this case, we don't. there aren't any, but just a rule of thumb, check for a common factor. Okay, I want you to pause the video right here, try B and D on your own, and then check it with me after. 
Okay, so for B, I took my outside square roots and I got 4x and 1. And I just wrote them in a different way so it's a little quicker. And then I did the check for myself. Make sure you're doing the check so you don't fall in a trap. Because if that middle term was anything but 8x, if it was 7x, 12x, 100x, this is not a perfect square trinomial. So I checked my work by doubling these two and I got 8x, so that's perfect. I put the 4x and the 1 in my bracket. I chose addition because the middle term is positive and I squared my bracket. Did the same thing for D. The square root of 9x squared was 3x. The square root of 25 was 5. So I put them in my brackets. I chose subtraction because of the middle term and I squared it. And my check worked. So that's awesome. Okay. So let's just summarize really quickly. Perfect square trinomials. Square root the first, square root the last, double the product. What a blast. And that's it. Obviously, you don't have to remember that like as a jingle, but that's what you're doing. Okay, that's it. Hopefully, it's easy. Just don't confuse perfect square trinomials and difference of squares because that's a very common mistake. The trinomial is three terms. That's going to have the bracket squared. Okay, the difference of square will have two brackets at the end, one addition, one subtraction. The reason you need the addition and subtraction for the difference of squares is because stuff has to cancel out so the middle term is no longer there and so that it is two terms.